So last night in New York, there was an incident involving an Afghanistan veteran who entered into a standoff with police, and there's a lot of stuff going around social media about why this happened. The most popular claim is that he was red flagged and the police were trying to confiscate 30 round magazines from him, uh, which are illegal in New York, and he basically barricaded himself in his house and a standoff ensued. And these 30 round magazines, despite literally being standard capacity, are labeled as high capacity magazines. And ironically, the police that came to confront this guy were carrying weapons loaded with these very high capacity magazines. Magazines. And I'm not going to make any assertions about what happened because I don't know what happened, frankly. I mean, I was literally up all last night following the story as it happened. There was a lot of information. There was also a lot of misinformation. So if you're interested in what happened, definitely look into it. But because of how fresh the story is, I'd much rather just talk about the broader implications of it, specifically with red flag laws, our police being militarized, our rights being infringed upon, our reaction to it as a country, stuff like that. So firstly, if you're not familiar with red flag laws, basically what they are are laws that allow for police to come confiscate your weapons, confiscate your property if you are simply accused of being a danger to yourself or others. And this means different things depending on where you are. In some places, simply being reported to the dispatch is enough for them to come and seize your property without a warrant or a court order and also subdue you. Uh, in other areas, a judge has to make a decision based on your actions and your statements. And oh yeah, it's a criminal offense if you fail to comply. And they're going to keep your property until they decide that you're entitled to have it returned to you. But the court can also decide to extend that. So right now there's 17 states plus DC that have some form of red flag legislation and I'm really pissed off. I'm exhausted, both physically and mentally exhausted right now. I was up all night. I did not sleep, not only because I was following the story, but I was just too angry to sleep. It's like, I reckon, we recognize that the government doing this to us is a threat. The government trying to take our guns away without due process of law is a threat. And our anger towards that is us choosing the fight rather than the flight response. That's why we yell, come and take it at these people. We are being threatened. Our rights are being threatened. And the historical record would strongly suggest that our lives are being threatened. And so our response is, if you want them, come take them. Pry them from our cold, dead hands. And there is fundamentally no difference between it being a high capacity magazine or being an AR-15 because they're coming for all of it. So if you're not ready to hold them at the gates for the magazines, you're going to be in for a rude awakening when you learn the hard way that they weren't really interested in compromising. They weren't really interested in, oh, well, we just got to ban the high capacity. Ma no, no, no. First, it's the magazines. Then it's the assault weapons. Then it's the semi-automatics. Then it's abolishing the Second Amendment. Because at that point, we'll have lost so much firepower as a country that no one will even care anymore. And those of us that do care will wish that we had, I don't know, maybe fought back a little bit harder on the things that the Republican leadership told us didn't matter. When in fact, all of it matters because it's all an infringement. And you can never give them an inch because they will take a mile. Never give them a bump stock ban. Never give them a magazine restriction because that's just them marching down the field towards their ultimate goal, which is door-to-door -door confiscation and the effective abolition of the Second Amendment because they don't care about the Constitution. And I am too mentally exhausted to deal with impertinent arguments. I'm too mentally exhausted to, to cite data proving gun control doesn't work. I'm too mentally exhausted to explain, well, how gun control only disarms law-abiding citizens. Yeah, you think they don't know that? That's the whole point. The whole point is to disarm you. The reality is that, you know, we're writing policy. The only thing that matters, literally the only thing that matters is that the policy is constitutional. Maybe the policy is good, maybe it's not. At the very least, it has to be constitutional. If it's unconstitutional, it's unjust. And if it's unjust, as Thomas Jefferson said, you're not only right to disobey it, you're obligated to disobey it. And the entire concept of a red flag law is antithetical to our God-given rights as outlined in the Constitution for our government to uphold. The red flag law says a man's property can be confiscated from him, not because of what he has done, but because of what he might do. Because of not what he has done, but because of what we're convinced that he might do, because of what someone else said. It's a clear violation of not only the presumption of innocence, of innocence until proven guilty, but of due process of law, where we require proof of criminal behavior before liberty can be infringed, whether that be through property confiscation or imprisonment, whatever. That we have data on our side is merely a bonus, but it doesn't matter because even if it were true that gun control works, even if it were true that red flag laws were effective at stopping mass shootings, even if all of that were true, which it isn't, it wouldn't matter because it's not constitutional. Even if gun control were 100% effective and red flag laws stopped 100% of mass shootings, I wouldn't care. You cannot deprive me of my rights because of the actions of others or because of actions that you believe that I might commit even though I haven't actually committed them. And at the end of the day, the reason that we have the Second Amendment 
The reason that we have a right to bear arms isn't because we want violence. It's because we want peace. It's because we recognize that bad people will take advantage of those who cannot defend themselves. And so it's important that everyone is able to defend themselves. And also that bad governments will do the same. And so I have to stress that we want peaceful outcomes if possible to all of this. And I do not advocate for violence in any forms. I never have. I disavow that. But that being said, if you truly want to avoid bloodshed, if you truly want to save lives, you have to stop going down this path. You have to stop poking this bear. Because I heard that there were like a hundred guys that showed up last night to help this veteran out within an hour. I heard that they were going to cut off his internet and his phone service so that he couldn't contact people, whatever. My point is that there are people in this country that will die on this hill. There are people in this country that will die for their God-given rights. And if you don't understand why someone would die for something as simple as a little plastic box that holds 30 bullets, you probably wouldn't die for anything because you probably have no convictions. And this was in New York where they tried to create a registry of all assault weapons in the state. They estimated that there were like a million of them. Guess how many weapons were registered? 45,000. 4.5%, less than 5%. Maybe some gun owners were okay with it. Maybe the non-gun owners were okay with it. But there are hundreds of thousands of gun owners in this country that aren't. So you need to back the f*** off because you have to remember who you work for. Remember that you swore an oath to uphold our rights. Remember that the founding fathers who shed blood to cement those rights in our constitution, who wrote the text that coat the walls through which you walk while you're working your bullshit Washington job. Remember that to them, resisting a tyrannical government was a completely uncontroversial, normal occurrence that some of them believed would have to happen every like 20 years. I think that was Jefferson that said that. And again, this is not meant to be a threat. This is not a threat. I don't condone violence. I don't endorse violence. I condemn violence. I am simply stating the fact that you are violating people's rights. And if you don't stop, they're not going to submit to you. There are hundreds of thousands of people in this country who would rather die than submit to their government. So keep that in mind, since you're in theory supposed to be acting in the best interest of the American people, which means upholding our rights. Also, last thing, be skeptical of police. I've had nothing but good experiences with police except in Ohio on I-80, but it happens to all of us. Most of them are good guys with a tough job. But don't forget what history shows us. Don't forget what's going to happen. Who's going to be going door to door to take your guns? Because it's not going to be Beto O'Rourke. It's not going to be Elizabeth Warren. It's going to be men just following orders, men just doing their jobs. And I do believe a decent proportion of them would refuse. But still the point remains. Remember who's going to be enforcing these unjust laws. Of course, blue lives matter and we support our police, but never forget, at the end of the day, they're just doing their job. They're just following orders. They have families to feed. And that means infringing upon your rights. Well, that may very well be what happens. So just something to keep in mind. I'm going to go take a nap. Red flag laws are evil. Donate to Gun Owners of America. They're better than the NRA. They're the best gun rights organization in the country. Yeah, you know, have a good rest of your Sunday, man. You know, keep it low stress. Keep it cozy. Yeah.